We're starting to facilitate a new group. Now what, Kelly? Well, it could be a challenge for a facilitator to lead a group of adult learners. So it's important to understand how to develop that common focus for the team. This foundation doesn't just happen. A facilitator needs to be purposeful and strategic as they put this groundwork in place. That's right, Ben. There needs to be an awareness of what may occur and as well how the facilitator can manage those events. So two key things to understand is how to understand group development, but also how to establish rules and norms for the team. Understanding group development is important so that we can sidestep potholes that develop. It isn't just about avoiding negative. It is also about knowing when the group is most productive and how to lead the group through the struggle at that moment. There are four key stages in the process of team development. These are normal. There are four stages in group development. Forming, storming, norming, and performing. In the forming stage, there are several characteristics that can emerge. Energy may be high, some may be optimistic, while others may really have a lot of anxiety. Members usually want to have a clear structure and parameters. Sometimes this isn't possible to provide. The topic and result may emerge, but the group will have to be part of that process. What, as a facilitator, can we provide? We can provide ground rules and protocols to allow this good work to emerge. The storming stage is natural and not an indication that you are an ineffective facilitator. This is where everyone's expectations are realigned with the reality, good or bad. The group may be fearing the process and this could create some conflict. Maybe this is in the form of misunderstanding. Maybe people just feel inadequate. Revising our ground rules and sharing that this is a normal process with the team can really help. Don't give up, keep going through this process. In the norming stage is when the team confronts the problems and works to resolve them. The main goal is to get into the performing stage and to become productive. We perform when we have fewer distractions and we really get to the job at hand. The group manages itself and follows the collective ground rules. Everyone at this point feels a sense of collective ownership, not just the facilitator. Ben has mentioned the importance of developing ground rules. This is the part of the process that we just can't skip. We can't assume that everyone can work together. They may have worked together in the past, but not for this specific task. This is a new game. Asking this key question, what will make us a productive team, with your team will establish the positive foundation that Ben was talking about. To enhance our process, you want to make sure that your answers address how you are going to choose to behave when you do work together as a team. So it's important to establish steps to resolve conflict during a neutral time before they actually happen. Because conflict will happen, but it can be productive. So this process will be better off when you resolve heated moments productively. So we need to go beyond just talking about it and agreeing verbally. We need to write it down so that we can stick to it as a common focus for the team. If it's written down, then we can bring it back later to reestablish and review that common agreement together. So Kelly, when we put this in, into practice, what can we expect? Well, usually what I've seen, Ben, is that because teams have been working together for a number of years, or staffs, they feel that they can skip this norm developing stage. But does this actually save time to skip that and then, you know, rely on past practice? Well, from what I've experienced, that when you skip this, the foundation really is missing. And usually what happens in a team, they have to backtrack and reestablish those norms. We're always trying to save time, though. So what about an administrator or a facilitator just, you know, setting the groundwork in place so that they'd have that in place before the group shows up? Well, I've, I've seen a couple of different ways done in my experience, Ben, but what I really do see is that when the group develops the norms on their own, then the group owns the entire process. Otherwise, the facilitator might own it. So again, it's better when the team does it together. <music>